So this is problem number three from the 2022 AP Statistics exam. This is the this is the probability for your response question from 2022. And in the problem, they tell us that we've got a machine at a manufacturing company program to fill shampoo bottles such that the amount of shampoo in each bottle is normally distributed. Uh, so they tell us that we have a normally distributed situation here. They tell us the mean and they tell us the standard deviation. They say, oh my gosh. Just realized I did something kind of silly here. Uh, we'll just keep going and talk about what I should have done in my work. Let the random variable A represent the amount of shampoo in liters that is inserted into the bottle by the filling machine. A bottle is considered to be underfilled if it has less than 0.5 liters of shampoo. Uh, determine the probability that a randomly selected bottle of shampoo will be underfilled. Show your work. So when I did my setup here, I didn't read the problem carefully enough. They have already find this random variable for some reason I define my own so that definitely would have been an issue you you wouldn't have wanted to do that in your actual work on this free response question on the test so I think those adjustments should allow us to, to now be okay with what's on the screen so a is going to be the liters of shampoo in a bottle a is going to follow a normal distribution with a mean of 0.6 and a standard deviation of 0.04. That information was all provided to us up here. So we want to know what the probability that A is less than or equal to 50 is going to be. Uh, now, you would want to make sure you're showing some calculations for this. So I've got my, I've got my normal curve drawn here. So the mean is 0.6. The value that we're trying to identify uh, is less than or equal to 0.5. So I, I realize that 0.5 is obviously to the left of 0.6, and I'm looking at a tiny little bit of space below that. And I, I know that I, I should have very little space because if you think about it, a standard deviation of 0 0.04, uh, I'm going to have one, two, I have to go three standard deviations, definitely more than two standard deviations to get from 0.6 down to this value. So most of your space is going to sit within two standard deviations of a mean for a normal distribution. And we are not within two standard deviations of the mean at this 0.5 level. Now, the, the work that I've shown right here is the calculation for the z-score that would correspond to this set of parameters. So I have a value of 0.5, the value that I'm, I'm trying to consider, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, right? So my test statistic, my z-score in this case, I'm trying to find what the probability is that my z-score is less than whatever this calculation turns out to be. I got my answer from the calculator, so I went with my normal CDF computation from the calculator, so I didn't use the tables uh, that you can find in the AP statistics formula section. So I, I have two different calculator inputs. Uh, you, you would want to show the computation of the z-score on your page. So even if I input this to the calculator, I'm looking for all the space from negative infinity to 0.5 with a mean of 0.6 and a standard deviation of 0.04. That gives me my answer, 0 0.0062. Uh, I could go ahead and, and do the z-score calculation. Now, if you do the z-score calculation, see, I didn't even compute it in my calculator here. So I don't really know what the numerical value of of what's listed here and again on my calculator. I don't even know what the numerical value of that is. I don't really care. Uh, but my adjustments to the rest of the inputs to the calculator would be if I'm standardized, if I'm using a z-score, my mean would be zero and my standard deviation would be one. And I get the same result either way. So we're looking at a probability of 0 0.006 uh, of a bottle containing less than 0.5 liters of shampoo. Part B says that after the bottles are filled, they're placed in boxes of 10 bottles per box. After the bottles are placed in the boxes, several boxes are placed in a crate for shipping to a beauty supply warehouse. The company's contract with the beauty supply warehouse states that one box will be randomly selected from the crate. If two or more boxes in the, if two or more bottles in the box that get selected or underfilled, the entire crate will be rejected and sent back to the manufacturing company. So the beauty supply warehouse manager is interested in the probability that a crate shipped to the warehouse will be rejected. Assume the amounts of shampoo in the bottles are independent of each other. So we're asked to define a random variable of interest for the warehouse ma manager and state how the random variable is distributed. So I went with the random variable Y. I could have gone with X. I you might remember initially I'd used X back in part A. It doesn't really matter what variable you go with, but whatever you pick, stay consistent. And try to pick a variable that doesn't really get used in 
many other situations and stats. Like I wouldn't want to pick uh, maybe S would probably be good to avoid. Z would be good to avoid, right? Standard deviation, Z score. You don't want to avoid assigning values, variables like that. Uh, not wrong if you do, but can cause some confusion. So I tend to try to avoid that. So Y is going to be the number of bottles in a box, in the box that gets selected that are underfilled. So since the probability of a bottle containing less than 0.5 liters of shampoo is that answer from part A, 0 0.006, and the amounts of shampoo in the bottles are independent of one another, that was stated to us right here, right? Uh, we know that a bottle is either going to be overfilled or underfilled, right? Above 0.5 or below 0.5, so that's a binary outcome. And we have a fixed number of bottles going into, should have proofread this a little bit better beforehand. We have 10 bottles going into each box. Because of that, Y is going to follow a binomial distribution, right? The conditions for binomial distribution would be binary outcome, independence, uh, fixed number of trials, and the same probability of success each time. So we meet all those conditions here. The probability of success, or I, I I said success because that's what I'm used to saying. A success is having an underfilled bottle, which I guess would technically be viewed as a failure, but still works. Uh, and then the number of bottles in a box is 10. So we want to know what the probability is that a box is going to be rejected. So a box is going to get rejected if Y is greater than or equal to 2, right? If, if the number of bottles in a box that are underfilled is above 2. Now, what I did is, is I went with the calculator method of developing this result once again. Uh, so I know that my, on my calculator, when I use my binomial CDF computation, I can only ever get the left-hand tail. I can never develop the right-hand tail. And in this case, because I'm looking at a greater than situation, I would be needing the right-hand tail. So I do have to make a little adjustment. Uh, you've probably talked about this within your own stats course, but I'm going to use the complement uh, in order to develop the probability that y is greater than or equal to 2, and the complement that I'm going to use is 1 minus the probability that y is less than or equal to 1, right? Uh, so to do this calculation on the calculator, I am going to have to, now you don't have to use the calculator the way I am. You could use the binomial probability calculation from the formula sheet. I just am of the mindset if I can do it on the calculator, I'm going to. Now if you do this specific calculation on the calculator, you'll notice right here, I did not on my page, and I would have to show this on my page, I did not just say 10 comma 0 0.062 comma 1, which is exactly what you see input to my calculator here. I have to make sure that I'm conveying to the grader that I know that first parameter is the number of trials, in this case 10 bottles in the box, are be being checked out. Uh, P is the probability of success. I have to label this as N, I have to label this as P, and I have to label this as the upper bound, right? We need to show that we're looking at the appropriate tail, and I do have one minus that left-hand tail in order to get the answer that we're looking for, and the answer is that Y is greater than or equal to 2. Do the calculation on the calculator, and we have a very, very small chance that the crate, that the box, is going to contain two or more bottles that are underfilled. So a very, very small chance that the whole entire crate is going to be rejected and sent back to the warehouse. Last part of this one says that to reduce the number of crates being rejected by the beauty supply warehouse, the manufacturing company is considering adjusting the programming of the machine so that the amount of bottle in each shampoo is normally distributed with a mean of 0.56. And at first glance, you might think, well, that's not good. We, we are now pushing the, the average amount in each bottle closer to the value that would indicate that it's underfilled. But notice what they're also doing. They're, they're adjusting the standard deviation downward a little bit too. So we're going to have the Although the shampoo filling machine is going to, on average, be putting less into each bottle, it'll be a little bit more precise, right? A little bit less uh, spread in the amounts that go into the bottles. So would we recommend that the manufacturing company use the original programming of the machine or the proposed adjustments to the filling machine? We want statistical justification for our choice. So what I did is I kind of rewound myself back to part A 
defined a new random variable. I, I went with W. Uh, so W is going to be the leader of, sh of shampoo in a bottle. We know that the machine is already following a normal distribution, so we're going to follow a normal distribution with a mean of 0.56 and a standard deviation of 0.03. So you see a very similar calculation to what we did back in part A. We just adjusted some of the parameters. The, the mean is now 0.56, standard deviation is now 0.03. Again, you see the computation of my z-score shown within my, my work on the page. And what you see is you see an uptick in the probability that a bottle ends up being underfilled. So although the machine is filling bottles more precisely, right, smaller spread, smaller standard deviation, uh, because the mean is now closer to the, the rejection level, we do have a, a higher probability that a bottle is going to end up being underfilled. So my concluding remarks here. This calculation indicates that making these adjustments is going to increase the probability of an individual bottle containing under a half liter of shampoo from 0 0.0062, that was the answer from part A, up to 0 0.0228. Now, this is still a fairly low probability, but it's clearly bigger than the probability that we got here. Back in part B, when we talked about the probability that a box is going to contain more than two underfilled bottles, all the other inputs to our binomial distribution remain unchanged with the exception of one thing, and that's the probability value. Because the probability is now increased, we're going to have a higher likelihood that the crate is going to get rejected by the warehouse. So obviously we should not recommend adjusting the programming of the filling machine.